We're gonna put med surge over there and we're gonna do this. Um, by the way, I tried filming this for you guys yesterday when I was at Starbucks. I'll insert some clips. So what I do is I came up with an but it was such a fail because it was so loud and I filmed for like 15 minutes, so that went to waste, but I tried for you guys. So hopefully today it'll be better. If you're taking peds right now, then you will understand the struggle of knowing the immunization schedule and growth and development. Like those two things, there's like 30 chapters just on infant, toddler, preschool, school age, and adolescent. Yeah. This right here is a study guide that my teacher um, handed out to us, which is really kind of her because she kind of narrowed it down. So for example, the first one, there's Tetralogy of Fallot. She wants you to mainly know expected labs and manifestations or like CHF, Management and Nutrition. So since my teacher gave us a study guide, I went ahead and did my study guide myself. So this is actually what I do for most exams. I handwrite my study guide so on each page is a different topic here is asthma and if asthma on here on the study guide she wants us to know associated causes treatment medications mdi and peak flow so i go ahead and i just boom 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 everything you need about peak flow percentage when to administer when to notify the healthcare provider this is all about asthma that i need to know based on her study guide then for example next thing i have tanner's stages of sexual development for girls and boys and then on the back page i have failure to thrive this study guide right here this study guide i took a lot of time to do as you can see like i wrote a lot and um this is chf that side is also CHF, the CHF is a big deal. She wants us to know a lot about the diet. So here you wanna do a three hour feeding schedule. Here you wanna increase their caloric density and you can do that by two ways. One is increase the concentration or add oils. These are oils, not like olive oil, honey. Then we have all of that. So that's what I do. Same with all these. So yeah, here we have bronchiolitis, droplet precautions, clinical manifestations, Diagnostic testing, that. The back side, I have cystic fibrosis. This is my handmade study guide. I went through and I just wrote my own because if I don't write it, I won't understand it. This over here was actually passed on to me from a classmate who got it from a former student that took this class. But as you can see, I had to fill in with my own handwriting because the study guide that they gave us like this, I don't need to know for my exam, and they just didn't go into depth as my own study guide. So I went through this, I went through all of this, and I just wrote in things that I had on my study guide that I got from the book that was not included in here. Now, not everybody's gonna have the option of having like a former classmate hand this down, but I did, so I just decided to use it as a reference, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't make your own. I think that this is definitely time consuming, but, this is what's really gonna help you to retain all the information and not just like someone else's work. So this is my stuff. This is what they had, but I added stuff in. This paper right here, I pulled out from my peds book. The book that I'm using is the Wong's Pediatric Essentials book. I feel like it's a pretty generic book that a lot of programs are using. Here, if you just take a quick look at it, a majority of these are the two, four, six months, and then it kind of varies after that. So what I like to do to get this down is I'm a writer, as you guys can see. I have to write it a million times or I just won't get it. Hep B, it's an IM. The contraindication, because we have to know that for my exam. So contraindication is allergy to baker's yeast. It's a three dose birth, one to two months, six months. Simple, got that down. After that, these next five, one, two, three, four, five, they all have something in common. And what it is is two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six. So, same here, 246, 246, 246, all that stuff. So what I went ahead and did was, I came up with an acronym to memorize that part. So I got D-I-H-P-R, I did DIPPER. So D-TAP, I-P-V, HIB, P-C-V, and R-V. So now I know that DIPPER has 246, and then from there, it varies. So. What I do is once I kind of study it and all that stuff and I kind of memorize that, 
Then we have the influenza, which we know is only once a year. Then we only have four left. We have MMR, varicella, hep A, and meningococcal. Meningococcal is the oddball. This one, it's just one dose and it's either two to three or 11 to 12. That's just something you just gotta memorize. But these three, they have something else in common. 12, 12, 12. So you're thinking, well, they're kind of different though. But this method that I'm showing you guys, it's better to knock out 80% than no none of it. So if you just looked at it like this, you're gonna be like, what the heck? So I would go through and I literally just get a blank piece of paper and I write out hep B, like not looking at anything. And then I do what I can. And as you can see, when I get down to MMR, varicella, hep A, I don't know the last part, but that's okay. At least I got all of this and I'm only missing these three. So MMR, I think we just looked over there, was four to six? Yeah, MMR, four to six, varicella, four to six, hep A, 12 and 18. Hep A, I got 12, I didn't get 18. So now all I would do, let me just get a pen. So now in like a different color, I would write, okay, four to six years, four to six years, and 18. So those are the only ones out of the whole, out of all of this, I only didn't get these three. That's better again than just looking at this and going, uh, my brain hurts. And this is just a way for me to literally break it up. I compartmentalize and I got it down for the most part. And look, I only missed these three. Now the next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on a blank piece of paper and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I already know, hep B, it's the first med you give at birth. And from there, I just kind of go into a rhythm and I know it's two to, one to two months and six months. So I know, okay, that's my hep B. Next, I know I have my dipper. D sorry, going too fast. And I'm holding my um, phone. I'm trying to make sure you guys see. So next I have my dipper. Dipper. So I have DTAP, IPV, inactivated polio virus, HIB, I think this is PV, Pol not polio, sorry. Um, what's PV? Um, oh no, PV. This is a PCV, pneumococcal virus, um, and then RV, rotavirus. So from there I know what all these have in common is two, four, and six. And then again, of course, the last part you just gotta study, but again, then as we continue, we have, what do we have next? Next we have MMR, varicella. Um, what do we have next? MMR, varicella, hep A, and then the weird oddball, meningia, sorry guys. This is so ugly. And this was, I think, two to three years old or 11 to 13 years old. All of these have in common, okay, this is 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, and I think this was four to six years, four to six years, and I don't know this one. Actually, I think this one is 12 to 15 months. Okay, so now that I did it freehand, okay, I'm actually literally, like, I'm over here. Hello. But I'm not even looking at my notes. I'm looking through the screen, literally. So this is everything I got. I know I, I don't know this. And then of course, again, how I said there's two, four, six, but some of them have different ones. I only missed this one. So now what I do is I'm gonna get my answer key and I'm gonna look. So, okay, so we have eight. All right, so, okay, yay! MMR was 12 to 15. Four to six, four to six, 12 months, 18. Okay, so now I know it's this one. 18 months for hep A. Um, I almost fell, my feet got stuck. But hopefully this helped you guys. Um, yeah, if you like these videos, thumbs it up. Um, this is my first time really like teaching on my channel, but if you guys like it, maybe I can try to teach it. But again, I'm just trying to learn as well. But this is just my method of how I'm studying for peds. So I'm sure you guys are curious. And whether it works or not, I guess it doesn't matter. You guys are just curious how I do it. So that's that. So that is basically all that I'm doing to memorize the immunization schedule. I know that um, not every method will work for everybody, but I thought I'd share how I do it just in case you guys want new ideas to study if you guys are like looking for a new way of studying. I know a lot of people use like flashcards. I don't 
use flashcards. It doesn't stick with me when I play with flashcards. I just never was a flashcard learner. I'm more of a rewriter over and over and over. I also have a whiteboard and a lot of whiteboard markers, which I probably should pull out and that would really be helpful. But um, I'm actually probably gonna do that tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and go take a nap right now. It's uh, six o'clock, but I think I'm gonna go take a nap. So I have some energy and when I wake up, I'm just gonna pull out my whiteboard and you know, study that way. What I like to do is like pull up a subject like rheumatic fever and then I'll write on my whiteboard like manifestation, signs and symptoms, treatments, um, management, all that stuff. So yeah, that's just how I'm studying. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something and I will see you in my next. Um, this is my first time like teaching. Hopefully I made sense and I wasn't like all over the place. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.